All right, this is Renzo for Fantasmic, and today we're taking a look at a new book that is in the Fantasmic Bookstore, and it is Takayuki Takeya Ifu no Zoke, which I believe translates to awe-inspiring sculpture work. Uh, this is a look at the legendary sculptor's work in uh, some recent films, probably his work from the last decade or so. Uh, so this includes uh, Shin Godzilla, Attack on Titan, um, the giant god warrior appears in Tokyo. So let's take a look. Uh, right here on the cover, we have the, it's a little spoilery, but hey, they, he's really proud of it. His work uh, on the final shot for Shin Godzilla. So this comes from the good people at Genkosha, uh, who also publish the magazine Sculptors. Right here, you can tell you can tell he's very proud of his work. Is uh, there's Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi. Uh, looks like they're taking a photograph of the first model of uh, the Kamada Godzilla, the first form. Technically, the second form. The first form is that giant tail that you see in Tokyo Bay. I mean, this book isn't entirely devoted to Shin Godzilla. I would say Shin Godzilla is about a third of the book. But if you are a Shin Godzilla fan, I would say this is probably a must get because they're they're I've never seen such close up shots of uh, the models that, and maquettes that were used in the film as in this book. I own the Shin Godzilla uh, art book as well. And one thing one nice thing about this is that Shin Godzilla art book is absolutely massive. Like I would recommend it to like a diehard Godzilla fan, but that is such a huge book that it makes flipping through it cumbersome. Whereas this one is like, you know, it's a nice, you know, easy softbound book. So it's easy to flip through. Uh, so yeah, Shin Godzilla, that was all done with CG. Um, they tempted using puppets that were designed by uh, Takia. And I think he did sculpture on it, but um, the shots didn't make it into the film. But he did do these uh, maquettes, which were used for, uh, you know, scanning for the CG composite shots. And so, you know, creating the CG model. Uh, the only practical of creature effect in the film is this tail that you see at the end. So this book has a lot of shots of that tail. But yeah, it's step by, it really goes step by step over how Takeya uh, created the different uh, maquettes and like concepts for how the creatures would look in Shin Godzilla. And this is a really sort of unprecedented look at Takeya's workshop. Uh, there are some Takeyuki Takeya art books, but they're generally uh, focused on like one particular show. Like there's one that's like all his work for Kamen Rider um, there's another that's like just his black and white drawings that were mostly used as like concept art for action figures. This is the first one in a long time that actually goes inside his workshop and takes a look at like how he, you know, sort of does his stuff. There's Kamada-kun. Isn't he cute? Come on. Look at him. He's adorable. Here we see, you know, the, from the early form to the more upright Shin Godzilla. We see the inside of Godzilla's mouth. Godzilla's mouth has no tongue in this film. It's just a maw. And one of the nice things that Takia does is that he really emphasizes the, uh, the organic in his work. Like looking at like the inside of his mouth, like it looks like something like you would see on like a, a deep sea sort of crustacean or you know, deep sea fish. Unfortunately, this book is pretty much entirely Japanese, but if you keep your cell phone handy with you and you use Google Translate, you can at least, you know, get some of the basic gist of what he's talking about. So these, this doesn't appear in the final film, but they, I think this is some of the concept sculpture work for like, how would the final evolution of Godzilla look like? But we get a lot of these shots. This is amazing because these are the creatures coming out 
of the tale at the end of the film. And that movie, you really barely get even a glimpse of these things. So, but now you can really look up close and see like what went into them. Like, see like how it's part human, part Godzilla. You have like the, a spine, but with the Godzilla dorsal fins coming out of it. I wonder why they, they're cycloptic though. Like, I feel like Anno, well, Anno has done cycloptic creatures before, like the uh, Ava Unit Zero is cycloptic. So maybe that's a nod to that. Maybe maybe there's a symbolism to it, or maybe Anno or Takio is like, It'd be real fucking creepy if these things are cycloptic. So yeah, this is sort of the sculpture of the tail. And if you, like, translate the text, like, he talks about how, like, I, I think there's a lot of, like, tanuki or like fish bones incorporated into it because the first time i looked at this i was like whoa did he really sculpt all of that and i realized like no like some of that is actual for real organic components and this isn't anything new for him if you look on his twitter account he keeps like a bucket of crustacean shells that he uses uh for kit bashing I wonder if it's really kit bashing if it comes from nature and not from a kit. Uh, he uses these shells for actual like model building if he wants to create like armor or sort of like organic looking components. So as I said, there are some other properties in this side's uh, Shin Godzilla. This is uh, a sculpture done for Attack on Titan. I believe this was done for the uh, live action film, which was also a production with Shinji Higuchi. And... He really, it's interesting looking at his version of the Colossal Titan because in that, in the, you know, original manga and anime art, he just kind of has like bones, you know, sort of jutting out from his face. But Takia likes giving his work a lot of texture so that it's not just like bone. It almost looks like patterns that are carved into it. Um, I think that kind of gives it more of like a mythic sort of quality to it. Like it's not just a big skeleton. There are like other, you know, qualities and textures to it. Uh, this is work for the short film, The Giant God Warrior Appears in Tokyo. And this was basically, this is, I guess you can call this like the pilot film for Shin Godzilla because it was... Directed by Shinji Higuchi, I think Ano was either a writer on it or like co-director, producer. And it's basically a prequel to Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. Takeya was sort of tasked with redesigning Hayao Miyazaki's original concept art to create this new version of the God Warrior. And like Ano, or I'm sorry, Miyazaki already made it sort of very ominous looking. And Ano actually animated the scenes that it appears in uh, the film, in the original Nausicaa. But um, Takia, well, because it's Takia, his whole thing is emphasizing like organic components and what have you. So we see this like crustacean shell like armor plating for the head and these, this musculature on the, the neck and these teeth jutting out. So this is sort of an up close look at like how the God Warrior was sculpted. This is work for the Moribito uh, live action drama. This, I don't think this has any official release in the U.S., but it's based on a series of novels that the anime adaptation was released in the U.S., but I don't think any, I don't think Takia worked on any of that, but this is our creature design for that. So going back to uh, Nausicaa, this is a sculpture that he did of uh, the Omu from Nausicaa, and this is actually pretty close to how Miyazaki drew the Omu. Um, we just see that, you know, Takia just took Miyazaki's design and just gave it a little more like detail and texture to it. Um, here's like sort of another sculpture that's set in the world of Nausicaa where you have like these gigantic fungus in the poison forest growing. Um, 
It, one of the things people think about, you know, when they think Miyazaki, they think sort of whimsy. They think like this sort of gentleness to it. They think like these idyllic settings. But a lot of Miyazaki's work is set in a very, very harsh world. There's, you know, people with diseases. There's war. There's the environment. And I think Takia really takes that aspect of Nausicaa and really runs with it. Because this is like sort of just giant insects and uh, giant fungus sort of running wild. And Takia sort of knows how to like really emphasize those components. Uh, this was uh, a sculpture, um, is like something Kamui. I'll put a subtitle saying uh, what the full title is. But this is a sculpture that Takia did for uh, an exhibit of his work that was done in Tokyo. I want to say 2013, a couple of years ago. So one of the things he was trying to do was uh, combine Heian and Joman era uh, sculpting techniques in this one creature. Uh, Heian and Joman are supposed to be like the ancient eras of Japan. And they each had like sort of their own distinct sort of, you know, sculpting styles to them. This is for Angle of Hunters. It sometimes it's called Fisherman's Angle. This calls it the Hunter's Angle. But it's sort of like this ongoing story that he's been doing since the early 90s that's been running in like SMH and Hobby Japan. Um, like I said earlier, there are not too many art books of Takia's sculpture work that really overview what he did. But there was one done for Angle of Fisherman. And um, that's a massive hardcover book. And unfortunately that goes for like at least $200 if you find it in good condition. Um, so this is definitely a lot more attainable than that art book. But if you're really nuts for his stuff, it's worth tracking down. And here at the end, uh, we have a little section of photographs of uh, Takia. Um, there he is as a baby playing with a dead seagull or duck that his dad shot. Uh, he grew up in Hokkaido. Uh, so he was mostly like in the wilderness of Hokkaido, not like the city like Sapporo. Um, so his family, there were a lot of you know hunters and fishermen around him in daily life so every you know day he's seeing uh dead animals he's seeing fishermen he's seeing like fur trappers and skinners and i think a lot of that really translates into his work because one of the things that makes takeya takeya is the organic quality of his sculptures and i think that's because he had this sort of childhood being very up close with you know life and also death and sort of like working with his hands you know he takes what he knows from life he takes his experiences and translates into that world of the imagination and i think that's why it takes some it gives something like shin godzilla which is a very fantastical creature but because of his know-how and because of his skills it gives it a veracity that it wouldn't ordinarily have this book is currently available in the Phantasmic store. Um, if you're a fan of Shin Godzilla or kaiju art or figure sculpting or monster design, I would say this is absolutely worth a look.